what are you doing for spring break? Um, I'm going to the Lubbock area to see my Welcome family. Time. I know. Welcome I'm time. so excited. And what about you? Girl, I am not leaving my pajamas or my bed or I'm not going to stop cuddling with Mr. Ginger, my cat. That's wonderful. That sounds like So fun. my husband will leave in the morning and I'll be asleep. And he's going to come home in the evenings. And it's time to start. Still oh, okay. Oh, oh, it's sorry. We better go. All right. Roll tape. Welcome to another episode of Pages for All Ages. I'm Leah Godwin from Fitzgerald Elementary. And I'm Nitsa Campos from Pope Elementary. We have some wonderful books to share with you today and I'm so excited. Books they can read over spring break. Or books you can read as a teacher to get you through to spring break. Yes. Um, this is a wonderful little book that I was happy to receive from Junior Library Guild. Hello by Aiko Ikigami. This is a picture book appropriate for pre-K through second grade. This wordless book is about a space alien who is trying to make friends when he reaches the galaxy. He tries to make friends with adults, but they are too busy and they ignore him. He sits alone and is approached by a little girl who offers to color with him. They color and then they make paper airplanes and the paper airplane gets stuck in a tree and the little girl is sad, but the alien friend transports it down with his transporting device. When they get ice cream, the alien also saves the dropped ice cream with his device. When his warning light goes off, it tells him it's time to go home and he gets in his spaceship and goes home. This is a lovely book that starts out with brilliant colors. And isn't that space alien so oh cute? That is beautiful colors. Uh -huh. And he comes down when he doesn't get anyone to talk to him. It's very drab when the grown-ups are in the picture. But when he makes friends with the little girl, it becomes bright again. And they color and play. So sweet. And this wordless book is definitely proof that you don't need words to tell a sweet story of friendship. And what a wonderful book to kind of transcend barriers and, you know, so, so sweet. Um, and here's the end where he spells out hello in the stars for her. Very sweet book. Yes kind of gives you the feels. Is it precious, Leah? It is precious, is, is isn't it that sweet? sweet? That's, isn't that sweet? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't have fancy nails like Leah does. Your, your manicure is making me jealous. Thank you so much. I feel like you should hold my book. You can hold my book, Leah. You go. Oh, no, that's that. okay. You oh, hold my it. my nails. Okay. This is Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. It is a young adult fantasy that I Nora Walker, like all the other Walker women, is a witch that has a mystical connection to the woods that surround her home. Across the lake from her home is the Jackjaw Camp for Wayward Boys. During a terrible winter storm, a young man from the camp goes missing, and another is dead. Two weeks later, while walking through the, wo walking through the Wicker Woods, Nora finds Oliver. Oliver has no idea how he got there, and does not recall how he has survived on his own for the past two weeks. She likes Oliver, but feels his disappearance and the death of the other boy from the camp just might be related. If only she had a nightshade, the magic all the other Walker women had. Then there is a bone moth that keeps appearing to her, which is an omen that death is near. Her death? She must untangle the truth. Is Oliver responsible for the death of the other young man from the camp? Haunting, yet enchanting at the same time. Earnshaw has created a world that is chilling, quiet, lonely, dangerous, and romantic. The woods are bewitching, and I wish I could walk them. Earnshaw has done it again. Another great book to curl up with next to a fire with a steaming cup of tea or coffee. Pick your poison and drown yourself in this book. That sounds so beautiful. And you know, it reminds me of the Time Watch Beetle that's in uh, Practical Magic. I've never seen that. 
You need to watch that movie. You need to read that book. Oh, oh it's a book? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes, I believe okay. Alice Hoffman. Isn't that cover gorgeous? I could be wrong. I love it. That is gorgeous, and it matches you. It's all sparkly, sparkly like you are. Uh, my next book is Poppy and Sam and the Mole Mystery by Cathon and Susan Oru. Um, this book was is a translation. This is a picture book with comic illustration and would be a great introduction to graphic novels. This is appropriate for primary grades. Poppy and Sam go visit Snuggles Mosley, who just baked a room full of pies. And Snuggles Mosley is a mole. And while she was waiting for her pies to cool, she realizes she has pl misplaced her little pink glasses, so she can't read her book while she waits. Poppy and Sam help her retrace her steps to find her glasses, and they find a lot of other lost items along the way and return them to their owners as they ask if anyone has seen Snuggles glasses. Solving the mystery is such fun, and guess who has Snuggles pretty pink glasses? The illustrations are simple and done in bright spring colors. They are just so precious. And I love Poppy and Sam. They are really cute. But they find all these things, all of these items at the end. Those are cute. And so they have to return them all. And they find that a bat actually has Poppy's pink glasses. <laughs> oh, super cute. And you know, bats and moles really need some corrective eyewear. So it's just really, really a sweet, sweet that book. That is cute. I love that. And what a great early introduction to a graphic yes, novel. Yes, it is. And I'm finding that my littles really get excited when there's graphic novels out my that they can get. My second graders and first graders really love the graphic novels also. Mm. They just, they gravitate towards them. My next book is Stay by Bobby Pyron. It is a middle grade book appropriate for students in grades three through six. It is also a blue bonnet book for the 2020-2021 school year. In this book, 12-year-old Piper and her family are moving to a new city. Her family is homeless and they are on their way to another shelter so her father can find work. When they get to the shelter, they discover that the father must go to an all-men shelter until an opening at the family shelter opens up. She's worried about being labeled the homeless girl at her new school. She takes comfort in joining the Firefly Girls, which is a local church similar to the Girl Scouts. We also have Jewel, a homeless woman living in a park with her dog, Baby. Baby is not allowed in the shelters and Jewel refuses to leave her beloved dog. When Jewel becomes sick and must be hospitalized, Baby is taken to a shelter. Re, another homeless woman, tries to help Baby but needs Piper's assistance. Piper, along with her Firefly, girl, Firefly Girls, must discover Jewel's backstory and raise money to help Jewel and Baby. This book is told in alternating chapters being told by Piper and then by Baby. The homeless, mental illness, shelters, dog shelters, and much more are discovered in this book with, with a soul. It is told with compassion. Readers will gobble this one up, and I think this would make a wonderful read aloud. Whether it's with parents and their children or teachers and their class, it is a gorgeous story. I know the cover is really, really sweet. Oh, the really cover is sweet. super cute. And usually when I see a dog on the cover of a book, I'm like, yeah. nope, can't read that because I'll cry the whole time. But... And you might shed a tear. It's just oh, so yeah. sweet. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's just so sweet. I just love it. I just love, love it. <laughs> there I am. Yeah, there you go. Stargazing by Jen Huang is a graphic novel for middle grade. And I don't have a copy with me today, but I know Mackenzie will work her magic and have she a copy does. on screen. This book recently won the Asian Pacific American Award for Literature. Um, in this book, Moon is everything that Christine is not. She is artistic, vocal, and friendly. And even though they have grown up with the same values and the same Chinese-American neighborhood, they are vastly different. And Christine has never known anyone quite like Moon. When they become neighbors, they have the opportunity to get to know one another. And Christine becomes quite jealous of how cool and unique Moon can be. You know, Moon actually believes that she sees and hears messages from another planet and that she is not meant to live on this earth. Moon has a seizure and they discover that she actually has a brain tumor which has caused her to hallucinate. 
She has a very successful surgery to remove the tumor and is welcomed back to school to a surprise fundraiser organized by Christine and her classmates so they can help to defray hospital costs. If you like the graphic novels, Real Friends or El Depo, you will definitely love stargazing. I just read it this past week. Did you like it? It was fabulous. I loved it was Moon. Fabulous. I really yes. loved Moon. I loved it. And you know, I was going to say before when you were talking about the, some of the Blue Bonnet Awards too, mm -hmm. that it's 2020, 2021. Yes. That just sounds so strange and I feel like it's in the future, but it's it's here. It's here. Girl, it's here. Is here. It's here. I thought we we're going to be in flying cars by now. I did too. But we're not. My next book is Charlie Hernandez and the League of Shadows by Ryan Calejo. It is a middle grade fantasy book appropriate for students in grades four through seven. It is a blue bonnet book for the 2020-2021 school year. Charlie Hernandez's house has burned down. His parents have gone missing. He's living with Mrs. Wilson who collects creepy looking dolls. And now he has sprouted horns on his head. With his classmates help, Violet, Charlie Hernandez discovers that all of his abuela's stories regarding Hispanic folktales are true. He loved listening to all of her stories and now it's paying off. Violet and Charlie encounter La Llorona, La Cuca, and many others from Latin and Hispanic folktales and myths. They're all after Charlie and the balance between the land of the living and the land of the dead is in jeopardy. What secrets does his family have? Is he the chosen one. Mm. I know it's mm. it's good. This one's good. There is a glossary in the back regarding the myths and legends. Give this to kiddos who love mythology. If they love the Rick Riordan books, they will love this one. It's full of adventure and there's a sequel which is Charlie Hernandez and the Castle of Bones. It's good. It sounds so good. What about Chupacabras? Are they in there too? No, but they mention it at the end of the book, so maybe book It'll two. Be the next one. I have a copy of that book because mm -hmm. I bought all of the mm -hmm. blue bonnets ready to read them, but I haven't gotten it's, to that it yet. Was, it's a lot of adventure, mm -hmm. and I'm not familiar with a lot of those that were mentioned in there, but I got to learn a lot about them. It was fun. It was a fun book to read. Sounds good time. Really, mm -hmm. really good. I have Anxious Charlie to the Rescue by Terry Milne. Um, Charlie the Dachshund is so anxious that he follows the same routine every morning since he's convinced that something bad will happen to him if he doesn't. One morning, there's an emergency call and he forgets to follow whose routine before leaving the house. And when he finds his friends after passing on the wrong side of the oak tree, he finds out that he must free Hans, another dog friend, from a pipe that he chose as a hiding place when he was playing hide and seek. Charlie then stays to play hide and seek when they free his friend and he plays for the whole afternoon. He's so happy when he goes home that he doesn't even worry about his, bef his before routine. And he thinks, well, I did do things the same way, didn't do things the same way, but everything is okay. And so part of his routine is to hop three times when he gets out of bed and he has to um, balance his toast on his nose. He has to walk a certain way around the tree. Well, when his friend gets stuck in the tree, I mean in the, in the log when they're playing hide and go seek, he finds out that he has to go and do things before he gets very sweet. At the end though, he doesn't line up his animals like he's supposed to and everything is okay and he sleeps just fine. Really good book for people dealing with anxiety or people who I guess actually have to have a routine or OCD. have OCD, OCD. Mm -hmm. and um, just really sweet and look how I mean, isn't that he's cute. sweet? Look at him, little he's anxious cute. Charlie he's and wouldn't cute. you know it would be a little dachshund. Yeah. So, oh my goodness. Really, really You know, sweet, we have students book. and kids that are dealing with, who are dealing with anxiety uh -huh. and OCD. And they can't handle it when something is out of Whack or routine out of at yes. school and they're like so. <gasps> yes. So, and I, you know, I have to say as an adult, I like my routine too. And I'm glad they're starting to write more books that are dealing with. Social, emotional Social, issues. emotional issues. Mm -hmm. so, Me too. I like that. Me too. My next book is The Night Diary by Vera 
Hiranandani, I hope I pronounced that correctly. It is a middle grade historical fiction appropriate for students in grades four through seven. This is set in 1947 India. Nisha, who is half Hindu and half Muslim, writes to her deceased Muslim mother in a diary. India is free from British rule, and because of the partition of India, their city is now in the Muslim state of Pakistan. They are now refugees and must leave their home behind along with their beloved Kazi, a Muslim cook. Nisha always enjoyed cooking with Kazi and felt comfortable speaking freely with him as opposed to her father, who was a stern Hindu doctor and can seem mean to her brother, who seems to struggle with dyslexia. Nisha's journal, Nisa journals the dangerous perils they encounter on their journey, her emotions, her struggles, and her desire to feel connected to her mother. Heronandani's imagery is second to none. At times, I could almost smell the food. I could feel Nisha's sorrow and confusion. Now, I gotta say, I did not know about this time in history, and I am grateful to The Night Diary for bringing this to my attention. It was conveyed eloquently and with great compassion. It had me looking more into this bloody period of time. This would make a wonderful read aloud, and I can see some wonderful discussions coming from it. This was a 2019 Newbery honoree, and I can definitely see why. I had no idea, but I delved into it and did some more research and it was very very interesting and i have that book in my to be read pile and it's i just wonderful. haven't gotten to it yet wonderful i need to quit putting books on top of I that know, pile I or know. rearrange them somehow i don't know our to be read pile is going to be forever it will never be done mm -hmm. and, and I, I need to not be anxious about that i yeah, guess it will never just be done keep reading. yeah just keep reading keep on reading this book I just happened to stumble upon, and I'm so glad I did. This is The End of Something Wonderful, A Practical Guide to a Backyard Funeral by Stephanie V.W. Lucianovic and illustrated by George Ermos. It is a picture book for all ages, and I would love to say for the ages. This book is quirky and funny and touching all at the same time. It is a practical guide to a backyard funeral for a beloved pet. It has a guide to planning, what to say, or to know it is okay to not know what to say. And crying because your something wonderful is now something dead is all right. A quote from the back of the book is, maybe you just want to sit with your something dead and be quiet for a while. And whatever you want to do is just fine. Funerals come at the end of something wonderful. And just remember, it's not the end of everything. You can always begin something wonderful again. And I would dare to put a mascara alert and a laughter alert on this book at the same time because it will have you laughing through your tears, which is one of my favorite mix of emotions. I walked in when you were sharing that with Julie and then Julie read it aloud, and we were all crying. We were all oh, laughing. laughing. I ordered on Amazon immediately. I got it the next day, and I made my husband, Noel, read it. Uh -huh. And what a treasure. It really is a treasure, treasure, treasure. Actually, it tells you, you know, how big, you know, to dig the hole, or perhaps a burial at sea if it is your beloved goldfish. In here, talking about don't try to bury something that's not your something dead because they will get up and leave in the middle of the funeral, things like that. It's okay to cry as much as you need to. Um, and, you know, don't dig it up <laughs> to find out what's going on. And while it's serious and sad, it just really isn't. So, Sweet, sweet, sweet story, and it definitely is laughter and mascara alert. And what a treasure to find. How did you find it? I just happened upon it. I was I was uh, looking for books about grief. That's right. And it, I just happened upon this book, and Love I thought, it. it definitely is something wonderful yes. to find this book. So Julie, very aptly named. Julie, who's our executive producer, um, ordered three copies immediately after she did her uh -huh. read aloud uh -huh. and we had such a great time talking about it and having some tears and laughing about it and and if you have a friend who loses a pet or 
You know, a child that loses a pet, this would be a great book to pass to them or gift them. And what a great book to have in the library. Yes. You know, because kids who lose their pets, you know. So, oh. A Practical Guide to the Backyard Wonderful Funeral. Book. All right. My next book is Love from the Crayons by Drew Daywalt. It is illustrated by Oliver Jeffers. It's a picture book. Did you know that love is brown? Yep, because sometimes love stinks. Love is also pink because sometimes it's silly. And sometimes love hides, and that's why it can be peach. Another adorable crayon book from Drew Daywalt and Oliver Jeffers. You guys know how much I love the crayon yes. series. If you love the crayons, you'll enjoy their latest. It is a sweet book. I know I had to have it. I have already read this one several times because it just makes my heart smile. Let me just show you a couple pages. And there is um, Love is Brown because Love Stinks. <laughs> it just makes me giggle. And Love is Pink because it can be silly. And then, you know, Peach was naked uh -huh. at the original one and he had to hide. And so the love sometimes peach. hide, yeah. yeah. Sometimes love is hidden. I just love this series. I have them all and I just treasure them. And I, I have read them over and over and over again. I never get tired of them. So I wanted you to know it was out there. When you say love is brown because it stinks, it reminded me of the old <laughs> song. I think it's from the 80s. It's something, the reds, the blues, and the pinks. Love stinks. Love stinks. That's all. Oh yes. <laughs> Jay Gell's band. Yes. And I hear that song all the time in um, the Wedding Singer. Yes. Yes, because he gets left at the so altar. So love is brown because love stinks. One more book I wanted to share with you, and this is a little bit off script, but Anita just shared this with me today. And you know I love Jory John and Pete Oswald, The Bad Seed, The Good Egg, The Cool Bean. And I've reviewed all of those on here, but this is The Great Eggscape, and it's about all the eggs. They leave their carton, and they drop into the store for a morning of fun. Well, almost everybody enjoys it. Shell is an egg that just isn't much fun of a fan of group activities. She would rather be alone, uh, but she doesn't want to let her friends down, so she plays with them anyway. And after a morning of hiding and seeking, someone is still missing. So will they all make it back to their carton? Here's Shell. She's not very excited about going out with them. She's not, mm -mm. She doesn't want to do it. It's just me today and I'm on my own. Where are they, the other eggs? Good question. So they all escape. And this is a wonderful book, of course. At the end, at the end is fun. The end is fun. The end is fun. And colorful. Shell has a good time. And there are stickers in this book at the very front. So if you put this in your library, librarians take this out because, well, you know you want the stickers. And you know the kids will stick them on everything, everything else. else. So stickers, the it's great eggscape. Just in time for so Easter. So good. Just in time, time for, for Easter. Easter. And the eggs, the stickers you can decorate mm -hmm. the eggs with. And it'd be a great Easter gift for yeah. little ones. Easter basket. So, wonderful cute. book. It's a cute book. It's a super, super sweet. Well, thank you for joining us on another episode of Pages for All Ages. And we will see you next time after a nice long rest of spring break. Yes, after a nice long rest. And we want to say congratulations to Lindsay. Yes. She got engaged yesterday. So, Lindsay and Derek, congratulations. Congratulations, Lindsay, and I'm still waiting to meet you, dear. I'm still waiting. Bye! Bye.